Praise be to Allah, we seek his help and his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his slave and messenger. I mean. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Jummah Mubarak, we praise Allah for granting us the blessing and the privilege to be gathered together on this fine Yom al Jummah following Dhul al Hijjah during the time of the pilgrimage to Mecca. And this pilgrimage this year is quite special. Um, I mean, every, every pilgrimage, obviously, as this is fard for us to participate, the fifth pillar in Islam. But it is the first time in quite some time that it will be happening in person, though with restrictions, as we know that individuals who are 65 or older are not being granted the opportunity to go due to health and safety concerns. Reasonable, I would say. And although we here right now who are tuning in from wherever we are, are not possibly, most likely, not able to go this year, it is still worth celebrating and acknowledging how significant it is that, it can, that this much needed and much heralded and much necessary um, practice of our portion of our, of our deen, of our spiritual practice, is to be happening in person. I am reminded of images from uh, Malcolm X's autobiography where I'm being around all of the pilgrims wearing the same outfits from all over the world and their racial differences were suddenly eliminated and all that he could see is the unification of Muslims from all over the world. And there was no anything that divided us at all. And it was all the fact that Muslims came to Mecca together to circumambulate around the Kaaba and worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And I think that image is especially important and relevant today in, in light of what the last couple of years have been. Obviously, the barrier to having Hajj these last couple of years has been because of a pandemic of a novel virus that has impacted us globally in unprecedented ways, or at least in the first time in quite some time. But I want us to remember um, believers that it is not the only pandemic that we've been fighting these last couple of years. It is the one that was novel and that led to shifts in how we've lived temporarily to being socially distant, having to cover our faces and our noses and having to not be able to gather in person, but virtually. But we've also been plagued by older and more dormant yet still relevant pandemics one of which is the pandemic of racism, most notably anti-Black racism that has also taken the lives of many. And then of course, the pandemic of misinformation, disinformation, lack of knowledge, spreading information, people feigning expertise and spreading information that is false and therefore dangerous. All three of those pandemics together have resulted in the same thing. 
the death of many of our brothers and sisters. And for those who did not, who fortunately did not um, encounter loss due to these pandemics, there has been the residue of separation, the residue of disconnection, the residue of lack of knowledge and therefore living in fear of the other due to us not knowing and understanding each other. That is not, brothers and sisters, how we are, how we were created. That is not, brothers and sisters, how we are meant to be and live. And that is not, brothers and sisters, how we should, what something that we should accept. Us being divided is not normal. Us standing neutral in the faith, face of death, destruction, or anything else is not normal. Us living in confusion, ambiguity, and pausing on the seeking of knowledge in consultation with experts and expertise is not normal. So I humbly ask us, brothers and sisters, to return to the root of normality in, with our, within ourselves and our deen, the root of our being and our purpose, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, to create spaces and contexts and norms that invite anyone to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to carry out our duties as vicegerents and representatives of Allah Azza wa Jal in this dunya. The Quran tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 30, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنَّا جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجَعْلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُوا الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبَّهُ نُسَبَّهُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I will create a vicegerent on earth. And they said, will you place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? Whilst we make, whilst we do celebrate your places and glory, your holy name. And he, Allah said, I know what you know not. So the angels, the malaik, questioned Allah's decision to make us his representatives on this earth because of the possibility of wrecking in this earth actions and events that create chaos and bloodshed and war and destruction. They say there's a common adage that every natural disaster is man-made. And there is some truth to that, especially within the context of climate change. But that's not what I want this khutbah to focus on. What this verse tells us is that we have the power, the privilege, the resources divinely given to shape a good, healthy world for ourselves, our brothers and sisters, and non-human animals as well. A world that, and that has to be, but what leads to that is the consciousness of our own responsibility towards shaping that kind of world. 
and the commitment towards doing the work to shape that world. And some of these pandemics that we've been confronted with these last couple of years have been a reminder of us collectively, how we've fallen short and what we can do differently to mitigate that and set this world in a direction of progress, freedom, and inclusion, and life, more importantly, and breath. But how do we get there? The first step starts with the inside, our own hearts and minds, cultivating inside of us the direction, the orientation towards Allah Azawajal, towards all, towards beauty and towards goodness. The first pandemic blocked us for a while from being able to pray in collectively in masajids. It blocked us from being able to travel to holy places in Mecca, in Medina, and Jerusalem to pray alongside our brothers and sisters from all over the world. And it has forced us instead to pray by ourselves, to develop a sense of intimacy with Allah Azzawajal that is removed from community. It has forced us to really cultivate an inner hajj rather than a physical external hajj, which we are blessed to be able to go back to celebrating today. And that inner hajj becomes important and becomes an important first step. Learning to carry, to cultivate and then carry our spiritual conviction as Muslims, regardless of location, time, and place. Alhamdulillah, a number of virtual spaces like the one we are in today have emerged to exactly inculcate us in that direction. And that is worthy of celebrating. And I praise you all for allowing that kind of community to remain created through these virtual khutbas, alhamdulillah. But being able to ensure that we have that inner hajj as often and as intensely as possible is the first step. Because when we learn what our deen says and when we orient our hearts towards that, we then lead with goodness and joy and not anger. And second, connection, after we build that connection with Allah Azawajal, we then build that, extend that connection with his creation, beginning with other um, Muslims. Uh, I have the honor of serving as an officiant for uh, a Muslim serving organization. So I've been blessed to travel all over the country to officiate niqahs between Muslims and at times Muslims and non-Muslims or you know Muslims and people of the book. Most recently, I had the honor and privilege of officiating a niqah between, it was an interracial and interfaith niqah of a South Asian Muslim man and a black Jamaican uh, Christian woman. And there was, although it was mostly a well-received um, event, there was some resistance from members of uh, the South Asians family at you know, the idea of not necessarily marrying someone of a different race, but someone of a different religion. And there was a, a certainty that that was not allowed in Islam. But I had to, as the Imam explained, actually, it is perfectly allowed for a Muslim man to marry a woman um, of the book, i.e. Christian or Jewish. 
and some more progressive scholars allow non-people of the book, but that's a different topic. But that conviction that it is what the religion says when it doesn't is dangerous because it is how we, are con we get confused about our state as Muslims, our orientation Islamically and our connection or lack thereof to each other. Allah Azza wa Jal intentionally created us from a single soul and then made us into different people and tribes, not so that we can be divided, but so that we can learn each other, build connections with each other, expand and unify our families and therefore the human race and strengthen our worship towards him and strengthen our convictions in his messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And helping us also gain access to Allah Azawajal's love and protection as creations by being good to each other and cultivating that primary purpose of worshiping Allah Azawajal. And so these situations is to illustrate that the solutions, the cures, the treatments to the various pandemics that we've had the misfortune of being faced with these last couple of years, all the solutions is in the Quran, the Sunnah, the Hadith, the precepts of our deen. And it's in us if we have, if we decide to access it. Because as vicegerents of Allah Azawajal, we have the potential towards the divine, towards being divine. And cultivating that will lead to an internal connection towards Allah, an internal and external connection towards each other and an internal external connection towards the planet. All three of which were into question these last couple of years. So my ask for any of you today and for any more who are not here, but are committed to you, whether they be your families or friends, return to the source. in this time of Hajj and upcoming um, Eid al-Adha, inshallah, return to the message of unity, of solidarity, of worship, and of knowledge seeking, and resist the forces, because these are not temptations. There are legitimate forces being spewed towards us like razors, lasers. The force of confusion, ambiguity, ignorance, which can lead to fear and therefore dangerous divisive actions. Let us resist through grounding ourselves so rigidly in our faith that the love of Allah Azawajal, the al-wadud, the act of constant giving to himself and to each other becomes second nature because it is natural for us to be lent in that way and to not let phenotypes, languages, culture, nationality, confuse us as enemies or competitors, but instead as allies towards the journey of accessing the greatness that is Allah Azawajal and all of his messengers, but most especially his messenger in the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him. But Ya Allah, 
I'd like to end now with a dua. Ya Allah, we praise you for bringing us together on this day, for granting us the opportunity to witness um, uh, the Hajj in person again, and to bear witness to the unifying global nature of performing that pilgrimage. May you grant us the tawfiq to continue to overcome any challenge that is placed before us in this life and give us the opportunity to fight against it and to cultivate simultaneously the love and solidarity among all believers that you've designed us to have. We also um, ask that you grant us the opportunity to live long and healthy lives where we get to cherish special moments with our loved ones and our families for, a long, for as long as possible. And that you grant us the courage to always resist erring away from your path and to resist harm of ourselves or others, whether intentional or not. And may you always, when we fall short, in forgive us because your infinite mercy is the greatest display of the love you have for your creation. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama sayyid ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Amen.